Good evening class, tonight we are going to discuss a new lesson since we have already finished discussing the types of literary techniques last meeting. So we are going to explore the biographical narratives that would also be part of your examination. And later I am going to give you a copy of this link so you can browse it whenever you want to study. But make sure to listen first in our class so you will know what buttons or elements you would click to see and read the contents. However, for those students who will not be able to access this presentation online, don't worry because I will still give you a copy that you can browse offline. So I hope everyone is ready. Okay, before we go to the discussion proper, here are today's objectives. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to differentiate from one another the various types of biographical narratives, Compare and contrast the styles of each type. And of course, you should be able to write your own sample story or description using any type of narrative of a person whose life you find interesting and intriguing. Okay, first, what is biographical narratives? Biographical narratives can be classified according to their length, scope, and amplitude into four different types, which are Biography, the profile, the character sketch, and the interview story. Also, it is a story that relates the key events and facts about a person's life. Also, if you are a biographical narrative writer, you should describe the events in a chronological or logical sequence and must reflect upon their significance. It also must in need the use of descriptive details that expands upon and explains shifts in the person's perspective. Okay, so as you can see, in this presentation, there are four icons below. And that four is the type, are the types of biographical narratives. So you would just click those icons to see the contents of each type. So we are now going to biography. As the etymology of the term implies bios, which means life, and graphene, which means writing, a biography basically is the narrative of a person's life written by someone else. And it is a contrast to an autobiography, which is the chronicle of a person's life written by the author himself or herself. And according to William Harmon and C. Hogg Holman's A Handbook to Literature, the 7th edition, in England, the word biography first came into use with Dryden, who in 1683 called it the history of particular men's lives. And the biography today is defined the accurate presentation of the life history from birth to death. So it is basically the same meaning from the history and from today's meaning. And in the right part of this presentation, you can see there are four types of biography. So we are now going to the first type, the full-length biography. It typically covers the entirety, which means whole, of the featured person's existence, covering all the significant events surrounding his or her life from womb to tomb, meaning from birth to death and usually includes a family tree or chronology of milestones in its appendices to further guide potential readers of the book. So, if we see um, full-length biography in books, in libraries, or in even online, you can see in the appendix part of the book that there is a family tree or chronology of milestones of the person featured in the story. Also, if you are a writer of full-length biography, you must have necessary patience and stamina, as well as clear vision and powerful imagination to reconstruct or put together a more or less truthful narrative of the subject's life. And that includes his or her hopes and wishes, as well as fear and apprehensions, since in reality, only God can accurately account a hundred percent for anyone's entire existence. So, the next type is the popular biography. It refers to the life story of a famous and or successful person. It's either a show business personality, professional athlete, business tycoon, political leader, fashion celebrity, 
a reigning monarch, or even a serial killer, which is meant for popular or mass consumption. And the main purpose of this biography is to reveal or disclose to the most number of people, which means for everyone, the tale of the public figure that was immortalized and focused on the main action of the narrative. So it means if you are a writer of the popular biography, you need to focus on the main action only of the person. Also, you need to ride on the popularity and notoriety of your subject. And you need to be quite opportunistic, even sensationalize the life story that you are telling by focusing on the dirty linen, the scandalous and the outrageous aspects of the person's existence. And now we're going to proceed to the literary biography. Let's see how it differs from the first two types. So unlike the first two, it is not intended for popular and mass consumption. They need not cater to the common people's fondness for gossip and rumor hearsay. So it means there is a main purpose why you need to write a literary biography. And according to Cristina Pantoja Hidalgo, a foremost practitioner of creative nonfiction in the Philippines, it is a narrative of the life of literary writer written by another literary writer. And the last type is the historical biography. Just like literary biography, it is also not intended for popular and mass consumption. It is more concerned with telling the truth. And if you are a, um, if you are a writer of this biography, you are actually interested in history itself. Because you are writing a historical figure and you are interested not only in your personal circumstances and historic events, but because though that historical figure have shaped um, the history and in return, the, the history shaped him or her. Okay, so for the next type of biographical narratives, let's, let's proceed to profile. According to Peter B. Hacobi, cities can be profiled. So can streets, can buildings, so can institutions, and mostly, however, we profile people. And it recreates the subject, makes it come alive on paper, gives the subject shape and meaning, causes us, as a readers, to meet and know that the subject, that city, that institution, that person. So, profile is shorter than a biography, and it normally concentrates on a single aspect only of a featured person's life. Although some background information of his or her origin is included, the profile for the most part focuses on the circumstances and events that have made the featured person important and or famous. For example, you are profiling a business tycoon or a um, political leader because you need to know um, that feature only. You need to know that aspect only as to why they need to be featured in your or they need to be profiled in your narrative. So just like the biography, profile has also three types. First, the cradle to current profile. It is a profile about the person's entire life, just like the full-length biography. The writer invests a great deal of time in researching, writing, and fact-checking. It also requires knowing the full sweep of a person's life. It demands a huge investment of time and only needed in rare circumstances. So it means it is not, you can, we cannot always see a type of cradle to current profile. The next is the niche profile. It is a profile that is 1,000 words or less and can be written in a short period. It can be written in just one sitting. And the writer composes a profile about someone in the news. It includes relevant background information. And to write a very successful niche profile, you must have a clear idea of what you are looking for. Telling detail and quotes that serve the story's purpose. 
And the last type of profile is the paragraph profile. It is brief, providing essential details about accomplishments or achievements and the person's significance to the story, of course. It is a paragraph or two and part of a larger story. It transforms a fairly flat story into one deal of characters. It helps your readers move through the story because names are no longer merely names. And it reveals something about a person's character that is germane to the broader story. So it means if you are writing a paragraph profile, you need to lead your readers to a bigger story. So it means if they read your paragraph profile, they need to search more of that person. So they, they will need to know about the person you feature in your paragraph profile. The third type of biographical narratives is the character sketch. It is a form of biographical narrative that is shorter than a profile. So if a profile is shorter than biography, character sketch is shorter than profile. And like a visual sketch or a pen and ink drawing, it can be described as a cameo or miniature life story. It means very little. It has a long history whose origins can be traced back in ancient China. Remember this, character sketch came from the China. Where C. Makian in his Shiji or the historical records featured highly animated character sketches brief but full of anecdotes and dialogue and arranged according to the character types. It is a quick rendering of a character and writing a sketch is about asking and answering questions. And in order for you to write a character sketch, you must ask yourself questions about your character. So it means if you are writing a character sketch, you need just to answer all the questions in your head to provide answers or to provide um, content in that narrative. So of course, again, if you are writing or if you are doing a character sketch, you need many, many adjectives to describe a person. So here are just few examples of millions or thousands of adjectives. This is a small table for the adjectives. So as you can see, there are bright, curious, etc. I will give you a copy of this um, presentation so you can use these adjectives when I ask you to write a character sketch. So now we are going to proceed to the last type of biographical narratives, the interview story. Let's see how it differs from the other three. Okay, so an interview story is a kind of biographical narrative with the length of a typical newspaper or magazine article. So it means it's actually lengthy because as you can see, there are um, lots of articles that is very lengthy in everything even online you can see those types of articles even in magazine articles different types of articles news feature editorial that are very lengthy and like the profile and character sketch it zeroes in one particular facet of the featured person's life so it means it only focuses on one aspect of a person and but unlike the other two it requires some research of course it's an interview it can be a product of just one meeting between the writer the interviewer and his or her own subject the interviewee also in interview story the featured person must still come alive on the written page this feat is achieved through vivid description i think you also need lots of adjectives here in interview story engaging narration bits of interesting dialogue scattered here and there and careful selection of the telling details to create an overall impression of the subject so if you are writing an interview story it's just like you are writing an article and if you know if you are writing an article you need to nitpick everything you don't need to have um put everything they said because that would basically mean nothing to your readers so if you are going to write an interview story 
here are the writing tips take down notes because i will give you i think i will give you the assignment about an interview story so i hope you take down notes everything written here so to come up with a successful interview story you may do the following First, research on the person you intend to write about to familiarize yourself with his or her background information. And based on your research, prepare 10 interesting questions that are not answerable by simple yes or no to encourage a free-flowing conversation between you and your interviewee. And if you are, in, you, you are the one who interviewed the person, you also need to be very conversational you need to be very vocal in everything because you need to have a lots of information and if the interview in an organized manner to maximize the time you spend with your subject make sure to have a timer so you can um, maximize the time of the interview and of course you need to take down notes for quick reference even if you are recording the conversation you need to have a pen and paper with you always and review the information you have gathered through your research and the interview you have recently conducted with your research and now with your subject rather and now you write your interview story so you need to put everything from your research to everything that have said by the interviewee so that's all I hope you learn a lot from the types of biographical narratives because later we will have a simple activity. And now we are going to proceed in that activity.